Obviously, you first need to purchase yourself a kabocha squash or a Japanese pumpkin. So go to the store. I bought mine at the grocery store, but I noticed them, especially seasonally, they're available widely, at least in my area. So hopefully you can track one down because they're so yummy if you've never had this particular variety of winter squash. The first thing I do is actually cut it in half. Well, I wash it first. You want to scrub the skin because the outer skin, when you bake it, becomes very tender and you eat it. You can eat the skin. So that's another wonderful thing about this squash is that the skin is delicate and contains a lot of the nutrients actually. After washing it thoroughly in my sink, I cut it in half very carefully with a large chef's knife. And then I uh, take the halves and each half I put them on a plate and I place this in the microwave for two and a half minutes. And the reason for that is number one, it softens the innards so that when you bake it, it becomes very tender and it brings out the natural sugars in the squash. So with all my experimentation in cooking this, it turns out the best if I do it this way. So microwaving it uh, in half for two and a half minutes, that seems to do the trick. And just a quick science lesson on microwaves because I suspect I might get asked this question. So if you're not familiar, there are two types of radiation, non-ionizing and ionizing. And the type of radiation that microwaves produce is non-ionizing radiation. And so it doesn't, to make a long story short, it doesn't uh, scramble the, it doesn't, disturb the molecules in such a way that causes uh, molecular change and damage to cells on that level. In other words, it's not carcinogenic as opposed to ionizing radiation, which examples of this type would be gamma rays, x-rays. That's a very good example of ionizing radiation, which does cause DNA damage and can lead to cancer. So just a distinction, yes, microwaves produce radiation, but not the harmful kind. So let's not poo-poo on microwaves. They are a modern convenience uh, for which we should be so grateful. And certainly, uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but certainly they're nothing to be feared is my point. So I put this in the microwave for two and a half minutes and I'm going to show you now uh, what I do. So in this bowl, I have rough chopped the kabocha squash to save time, and I have my oven preheating at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. To the side, I have set the seeds because uh, pumpkin seeds are a rich source of vitamin E and omega-3 fatty acids and protein, of course, and they're rich in zinc. Later on, I will clean, dry, and then roast them in a low heat oven and enjoy them um, separately because I love to eat the pumpkin seeds and nothing in my kitchen goes to waste. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. I uh, used my grandmother's spoon heirloom silverware, so always having those, um, always having that utensil in my kitchen to remind me of my grandma. So I've chopped this in a rough dice and I, this is part of the reason that I microwave the squash before I cut this because it made the cutting process very easy. And in full transparency, I had forgotten to turn the camera on while, <laughs> while I was chopping this. So that footage was unfortunately lost or not created because I didn't hit the button on my phone. I apologize for that, but I chopped it. <laughs> I chopped it up. And uh, one of the perils of, you know, being, trying to film, <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, one of the perils of filming yourself is um, remembering, <laughs> at least in my case, remembering to push the red button. So I apologize for that. While I was chopping this, I was telling, I was talking about 
my mother because uh, she made this festive apron for me, this Mrs. Claus apron. <laughs> and I was explaining how my mother is a very talented seamstress and actually a designer. Um, she's an artist of many trades actually, but one of her specialties is clothing design and in fact, couture clothing design. Um, this of course is just meant for fun and it's festive, but since I was a child, she has sewn my clothes and my neighbors, uh, the neighbor kids clothes and uh, she's extremely talented in that arena. But she also designs uh, beautiful gardens, Japanese gardens. Actually, she and my auntie both are very skilled uh, artists. That is uh, their field of expertise. And so I just wanted to share that with you uh, because it's something that I cherish. All the things that she's made me, all the garments that she's made me and I've worn over the years, even playful things like this. Um, she's always making things for me and uh, giving them to me every time she sees me. So I was explaining the story behind my <laughs> festive apron. <laughs> so there, uh, there you have it. But I'm going to put my squash in the oven now. Um, my oven is preheated. I have just a um, parchment lined baking sheet. And I seasoned the squash very simply with salt. I'm using, this is a very popular product. I just bought this because I had been seeing it uh, around and I know this is a very popular salt, this Redmond real salt. So I thought I would try it. I picked it up at the store and um, taste wise, I don't notice a difference, but I like that it's mined in the USA. It seems to be pure and natural. So I always love uh, salt. So anyway, I'm using that salt and then I'm going to sprinkle, not a lot, but a little bit of, this is Ceylon cinnamon, Ceylon, Ceylon, which is the one I prefer to use for the benefits. And then you already know it's coming with my glove. I just massage this. Well, not really massage because this is hard, but toss it. And then very delicately <laughs> put that on my baking dish or my baking pan rather. And I'll have you know that, by the way, that's not the first time I've done that where I've recorded a video and not recorded it. <laughs> uh, you have no idea how many times I've done that, much to my own dismay and disappointment. But uh, teaches patience and acceptance and gives me a moment to pause and breathe and practice my stress management, right? <laughs> I'm practicing my stress management, taking my own advice. <laughs> yeah. Absent-mindedness, um, it comes along with my personality, so I have to always be managing that. Anyway, I'm going to put this in my oven like I said, it's set at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and already looks good, smells good. And um, I'm gonna put this in the oven for about 38 minutes. I know it seems very specific, but I find that 35 minutes is not enough and 40 minutes is too much. So between 36 and 38 minutes seems to be the best. I don't find that I need to flip the pieces or toss them or anything, rotate the pan. I mean, you can, but I don't do that just I, out of laziness, I suppose. <laughs> but I put this on the bottom most rack of the oven because I find that if it's in the low position in the oven, it gets a nice caramelization um, around the edges, which is really tasty. So I'm going to put this in the oven. So while that is baking, I guess I can uh, show you or I can clean off. I'm going to be true to my word and clean uh, the seeds so I can get started on this. And I will show you what I do with the seeds. Uh, they're amazing. Um, so I wanted to show you this too. 
All right, so I transferred the seeds into a, a colander and I'm going to rinse them. And then these will go in a 350 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes and you can check. And oven times vary by the way, so your oven might be different than mine, but I find that about 10, 10 or 12 minutes in a 350 degree oven seems to be just about right. And then they're really great to just have a few or a lot <laughs> and they're just really delicious. Uh, and like I said, great source of omega-3 fats and vitamin E and zinc. Like I have mentioned, very good for um, the system, the whole system, but especially good for skin and nails and hair. Uh, it's fortifying. Zinc is a fortifying uh, food, mineral, natural source of that trace mineral. Oh. I'm going to wait until my pumpkin is finished. And I think I mentioned this in the um, video that never was, <laughs> but uh, kabocha squash, if you've never had it, it is a uh, very rich in polyphenols and antioxidants and beta carotene, vitamin A, very high in vitamin A, vitamin C. It's extremely rich in potassium and fiber, obviously, and very rich in complex carbohydrates. And females watching this, you might want to take particular note that kabocha squash and winter squashes in general, but these types of foods, these complex carbohydrate rich foods are progesterone building foods. So they are supportive, in other words, for a healthy reproductive cycle for females. So I love to incorporate foods like this to feed my body and feed my soul and they help my mood, they balance my hormones, and everything is golden when I eat a variety of uh, these wonderful nutrient-rich foods. I'm always, you know, I prepare all my own food, I cook for myself, and so I have a lifetime of experience in that arena. I'm very independent that way, well, I'm very independent generally, and um, it's something I take pride in, but definitely my uh, kitchen independence, being able to cook for myself and feed myself appropriately and uh, conscientiously. <laughs> it's something that I take great pride in because I think it's so hard to, uh, it's not easy finding balance in life between everything. It's not easy to find balance in life and to get all the right things done, so to speak, for yourself, for self-care. So I want to encourage you to uh, do one healthy thing, one thing for yourself today that maybe you didn't do yesterday. Just choose one and start there. And so as not to overwhelm yourself and get discouraged or frustrated, just start with one thing for the health and benefit of yourself, whether that's the benefit of your mood or your physical body, your emotional body, something for yourself and uh, do that and live well in doing that. That's what I always say. So I will take a break for now. Uh, speaking of feeding oneself, it's my meal time. So I'm going to take a break and feed myself. And by then uh, the pumpkin should be done. And then I can put these in the oven to get them uh, started. So for now, I'm going to feed my body. So the squash is all done and it's cooled off and I will store this in a glass airtight container and enjoy it. I do have one. I do have a container already in my refrigerator uh, because I'm showing you what I actually eat. So this is my real life and this is my current batch. I will eat this. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> and whatever I can't finish, by the way, this food freezes very well. So if you have leftovers that you can't finish or you just want to make a head for convenience, you can cool it and then place it in a freezer bag, a Ziploc freezer bag, and it freezes beautifully. And then just thaw out the portions uh, accordingly and reheat and enjoy to your heart's content. That's it from me. And I'm going to clean up now and leave you clean up more, <laughs> more cleaning. And, uh, and then I'm going to go for a walk. 
I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will make kabocha squash or try it if you've never tried it before. And let me know in the comments below if you like this food. Eat well and be well. And I thank you as always for watching. Thank you for being here. And you shall see me soon.